Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today we are going to talk about the infamous Ran Caesarea Cleave. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. Lastly, my alt guild Corgi Squad has a couple spots open, so if you're looking for a chill place to relax, go ahead and hop on into the Discord and we can get you invited. We accept everyone, we expect nothing from you, you don't have to do any attacks or anything like that. It's basically just a really relaxed chill guild. Uh, for people's, you know, alt accounts or even their main accounts if they just want to kind of, you know, have gold buff and collect guild rewards and stuff like that. Okay, so Ran Caesarea is a popular draft strategy right now in RTA, and it's really difficult to play against. I've talked to a lot of people, and it seems like just about everyone struggles with it, so I thought I would show some matches today and we can talk about, you know, how to potentially deal with this comp. Um, I struggle with it as well, so I'm certainly, you know, it's, there's aren't perfect answers to it yet, unfortunately. I think it's basically just overtuned. Um, so we can go ahead and look at that. Before we get into those matches, though, I'm going to show um, a couple of the heroes, uh, like Ran, Caesarea, Cerise, etc. Uh, we'll talk about how they're built, and then we will get into the games. Okay, so this is Summertime Iceria. People typically put lots of attack, speed, and effectiveness on her with a little bit of bulk. And the speed spread that you typically see at the upper end is 240 to 260. Um, on the attack side, you're looking at over 5k. Some people go all the way up to like 6k or more attack. And effectiveness probably starts around 150 and goes up from there. Some people do run 200, 250 effectivenesses on their summertime ice area. How much you put into each of those, I think, depends a bit on your playstyle. There are pluses and minuses to each one. Having a faster ice area is really nice because it can help her cut really fast units when she gets her CR boost. So hypothetically, if the enemy drafts like a 300 or a 310 ACID, and you have a Ran that outspeeds that, when he triggers Caesarea's CR boost, if you have a fast enough Iceria, she can cut that 310 ACID. And I think it's around 260 is the speed mark to do that. In terms of effectiveness, you know, a lot of Soul Weavers run 150 ER, so that's kind of the minimum that you want to have for effectiveness to counter that. Other Soul Weavers have up to 200, 250, even 300 ER, so you could consider building even more to deal with those. And then obviously attack is just her damage, right? She doesn't need crit chance or crit damage, so more attack is obviously better just for more damage. I like having a little bit of bulk uh, to let you survive a few hits, like if Rem counters you know, a couple times, uh, it can be nice to have that. In terms of her gear, you know, you're basically just looking for speed, attack, and effectiveness are the main substats with a little bit of HP and defense sprinkled in where you can. Part of what makes this cleave so ridiculous is that you don't need super, super premium gear on any of these heroes to play this comp at a high level. Uh, the heroes, I think, are so overtuned that it lets you kind of get away with like subpar gear, right, and uh, still be able to accomplish the cleave. Uh, you do probably need to have a plus 30 artifact. Uh, if you don't, you're just not going to be as consistent because this will just not trigger sometimes and it feels absolutely terrible if that happens. So uh, I think a plus 30 artifact is very important. You can look at Ran next. Okay, Ran, the Menace. So Ran has an absurdly high base speed. Uh, mine is 311 here with this gear and he's not really built on damage. He, he's just fast, essentially. Uh, but you could build him on damage if you wanted to or if you have that gear. That's usually pretty premium gear that some people want to put on other heroes, though, so you absolutely don't need it on Ran. It can be nice to have. The advantage to a damage build would be if you outsped an ACID, you would just delete it, right, with the S3, uh, and that can definitely be nice. Um, it can cause some problems, though, like if the opponent has Arbiter Vildred and you delete that, that can trigger him to go, and that could be a problem. Uh, in terms of the rest of his stats, you know, effectiveness can be nice. Um, to me, it, it doesn't really matter. You just want them fast is the main thing. So just go for speed. Um, this type of gear is, you know, basically just all rolled into speed. And the rest of the subs are just, I wasn't even looking at them. It's just, I want more speed, right? His artifact, uh, you can have a few different options here. Silver Rain can be really nice if you want to give attack buff to Caesarea or to another hero on your team. Having access to another attack buffer in your comps can be really powerful. Other options... Uh, there are a few actually. A bunch of people are preaching RNL, and it can be really good um, if you're on the damage build. It feels less impactful, right, if you're not on the damage build. Uh, some people use like Alabastron just to get more effectiveness. So that's an option, this thing here. So if you want to go for more of that, you know, effectiveness build, you could consider Alabastron. Um, there's probably a few other things you could put them on, but those are typically the main ones that I see. Uh, so that's Ran. Cerise is another opener for this comp. You generally want her above 295 speed. 
Um, I would like her over 300, um, so that if I brought an imprint, I wouldn't have to ban an acid, for example. But my other speed gear is on ML Cowark at the moment, um, so I'm just running her at 297, and honestly, it's worked fine. I kind of prioritized effectiveness a little bit more on her rather than Ran because Cerise has that stun on her S2, and it feels really good to be able to stun a Soul Weaver, for example. So I'd like like 150 effectiveness on her, but kind of my better speed gears on other heroes right now. So again, she's holding backup gear. So it's kind of crazy that you can get away with this, you know, on kind of subpar stats at a very high level. Um, in terms of her artifact, I think Miss Confile is best in slot at the moment. Guiding Light would be amazing if it wasn't for Rimuru. Uh, if you have Guiding Light, then that's going to trigger Rimuru to counter his, you know, with his Adapt and Analyze or whatever, and that's a big problem. Also, having the defense breaks from Confile can win you a game pretty easily. So those are the these are the three heroes that I commonly use for the opener. Um, let's see, another one that you could use for the opener would be Operator Sigrid. Having her speed tuned to be a little bit faster than Summertime Iceria can be really impactful. And the reason for that is her S3 will strip, right, and can um, trigger Iceria's, you know, passive uh, bomb ability. And it can be really powerful to have Operator Sigrid as a enabler for Caesarea. So an example where that could be impactful would be if the opponent has FCC and you're able to sneak in an Opsig and they're not really speed contesting you. Um, so now you have essentially an activator for Caesarea and a huge damage threat and an attack buffer for your team. Very powerful. Um, I have her on Guiding Light and I have her on Guiding Light because I think her gear is really cracked and she has super high damage. So I think I can get away with Guiding Light. But if you have less damage, then you probably need to run a damage artifact like Portrait or what is it? Uh, the Wall of Order one, Landy's artifact. Uh, this one, you know, that could give her Gab uh, would be another option to use. So I like having Guiding Light because it lets me ignore Acid a lot of the time. If you put Guiding Light on Operator Sigrid and they think they can snipe her out with Acid and then they start the battle and realize they can't target her and there may not be a good target, you know, for Acid, then they're pretty screwed. They could go after Summertime Iceria, but she has enough bulk to live the really fast acids, and she can just soul burn out of the silence anyways, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. So these are the common units that you can use for this cleave. There are some other ones that we'll talk about as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some RTA matches. So I think part of why people have trouble with cleaves like this, or cleaves in general, is the matches can happen really fast, and it can be hard to understand exactly what's happening if you don't play these units yourself. So we're going to go through and explain how this cleave is working, how people generally draft it, and I think once you understand that, it'll give you you know, more knowledge and a better ability to counteract it. So I pre ban Bellion when I want to do this cleave, and I think most people do as well. She's really obnoxious to play against. So if you see a Bellion pre ban, that's clue number one that you might be playing against a Rancisaria player. Not absolute, obviously, because a lot of people pre ban Bellion. One of the first things people do is they take a carry unit like Apoc or Steny. It's also very important to be able to flex out of this cleave and to go into standard if the opponent's doing something really unfavorable to you. Here, they've ta they haven't taken anything yet that's obnoxious for this cleave, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Both Ruel and Rylet are soft to it, since Rylet usually does not have immunity, and Ruel just gets exploded. So I take Cerise and Summertime Iceria here. I don't take Ran because they have Fallen Cecilia, and I want the ability to take Operator Sigrid last if they uh, don't double speed contest me. Uh, they don't, they just take Acid and RB. Um, I can take Opsig here. Opsig is a nice RB answer, right, because she can kill him and then S3 and push him back. Um, so that's a nice option to have. Um, I also have Steny for the RB, so I don't have to worry about him. So we can take Opsig here and then ban the Acid. And this should be a, a pretty easy win unless we get RNG'd really hard. So you can see, essentially what I've done is I've taken a carry unit, I've taken an enabler and Summertime Iceria, and then my last pick or two is either going to be another enabler for Summertime Iceria, or I could flex into something that causes a big problem for my opponent's draft. So for example, if they just take like four squishy speed units, I could just take, you know, like Carmen Maid or Ruel and something else, and like those things can't deal with the Ruel, and so I just win. So here we get first turn. And this will showcase the strength of Cerise. She's going to be able to take off immunity, but then leave the barrier so Opsig can still do her Opsig thing. Uh, let's see, okay, so we don't hit the Rylet, but 
we land a bomb on Ruel. Unfortunately, we did not strip the immunity from Fallen Cecilia. That happens. This is kind of a control cleave comp, so you're going to get 15% to, like, a lot uh, when you play it. So we can go ahead and kill Arby here. Uh, he's squishy, so even without attack buff, we're able to do that. And then we can push everybody back with skill 3. And then this should allow Isari to take the turn. Uh, Arby does resist the pushback though, which is pretty tragic. So Arby gets his skill 3 off, but not a big deal. He hasn't gabbed. Um, and this is why you build your heroes with a little bit of bulk, so you could take a hit like this. We have blind on Isaria, which is unfortunate. Uh, we did strip the Rylet though, which is nice, um, and we get a dual attack there, so I guess that kind of makes up for the resist on Arby. Ruel is bombed, so she's going to die, or, or at the very least, she won't be able to uh, you know, stop us here, because we'll stun her. And I want to save the souls to be able to soul burn Steny. Uh, I was deciding here if I wanted to go more into Ruel, but I think I should have plenty of gas to uh, kill her with the rest of my team. So we can take out Arby there. We can use the skill 3 on our Spectre to take out the FCC. We still have stun with Cerise to be able to lock down the Ruel again, and then we'll start bombing her with Isaria. So virtually impossible for the opponent to win from this spot. So that match illustrated kind of a typical Rand Cesaria draft and why it's so powerful. Um, in these next games, I'm going to try to showcase either how I respond to somebody drafting Rand Cesaria against me, or how other people are responding to me drafting Rand and Cesaria. So I preban Bellion, the opponent prebans AOL. This is a very standard kind of double preban that you run into because a lot of people preban both of these heroes. I first pick Apocalypse Ravi. It'll let me flex into either Standard or into Ran Cesaria. The opponent takes Fallen Cecilia and Rimuru. I take Ran and Cesaria. I'm not afraid of Rimuru because my, the heroes for this cleave are not built on immunity, so they're just not going to trigger him. The opponent takes Violet. This is a very common response to Ran Cesaria and is particularly effective if you build Violet on immunity. The reason why is because Ran will fail to strip him and if Cesaria tries to bomb him on her passive, he'll still have immunity, and so you lose one of the bombs. You can still use Violet against Ran Cesaria, but it's much less effective without immunity. Uh, Violet becomes less effective against other things with immunity because you lose the damage from Pen Set. But if you really struggle against Ran Cesaria and you don't have you know good speed options or good really high ER options to use against the cleave, then I would recommend putting Violet on immunity because it's a pretty common draft that you run into, so you're going to want to have answers built up to it. I take Spectre Tenebria next. She's another carry unit, and she works well into Violet, right, because she can't be countered on her skill one. And I'm debating about my last pick here. I think I want another activator for Cesaria, so I take Cerise. Um, the opponent has taken ML Ball, which is interesting. I kind of presume this is a high ER ML Ball, otherwise he'll just get bombed and die, right? So uh, this is an interesting you know, way to handle Ran Cesaria. The opponent takes Arbiter Vildred. Um, this is another option I see a lot of people pick, uh, particularly like the slow degen ones that are like on counter and Moonlight Dreamblade. Again, it's just kind of like an RNG thing. Um, it seems to work for some people. I don't think it's super reliable. And many of the comps that you draft with Rancisaria have good RB answers like Spectre Tenebria, Opsig, etc. So you don't always need to worry about him. Um, in this case, I think he's a ban because I only have Spectre Tenebria to uh, answer RB. Okay, so Ran comes up. I do not want to skill 2 because that'll give my team immunity and trigger Rimuru. So instead, we're just going to skill 3. So you can see I've missed on Violet here. We do strip the Rimuru and the Fallen Cecilia. We activate Cesaria, and you can see Violet's immune there. Did you see that immune pop up? So he would have been bombed, but that immunity prevented it from happening. So that lessened the impact that my Summertime Isaria had. I'm debating here if I want to try stunning anything, but I think I just want to skill 3, get up invincibility, or invulnerability, or whatever it's called, and hopefully restrict the ball so he doesn't push up. But he uh, resisted everything, so he's a very high ER, and he's also very fast. 
So this is an interesting option that you could use. Note that he's only 13k hit points. So this is a very squishy ball that's probably just all speed and ER, presumably built specifically to counter this cleave. And here it kind of worked because he slept my Isaria, so I, I wasn't able to get bombs on other things. Uh, Rimuru is defense broken and is probably pretty dead. I luckily don't have any buffs, so he's not going to defense break anything. But it might be a little sketchy for me. This Violet's 19k HP on immunity, so he probably doesn't hit super hard. He does crit the Cesarea, which is pretty unfortunate for me. So the, the Violet plus the Rimuru will kill the Cesarea if he decides to go for it. The one nice thing going for me right now is if the opponent uses his Fallen Cecilia skill 3 to put up skill null, it will wake up my Ran and my Cerise. So that will be, I guess, only the Cerise now that Ran is dead. So I will be able to take off the skill null from Rimuru and then come in, you know, with the rest of my team. Uh, so Cesarea is down. And you're going to see the strength of this comp here. He was able to deal with the Isaria with the ball, right? But he has to deal with Apocalypse Ravi. And the only thing on his team that can really do that super well is Violet. But if you put Violet on immunity, he's not quite as good into uh, Apocalypse Ravi because he doesn't do quite as much damage. So we get Isaria back luckily. I think if we got Ran back, I would just lose. So we, we did win the 50-50 there. Uh, we bomb Violet. I debate about bombing Ball here, but I'm just going to skill 3. Um, I want to get these these guys stunned down. I want to mitigate the va the damage from Violet. Unfortunately, we get a counter from Violet there, which is pretty annoying. Uh, but now they're all stunned. And I think I'm behind in this match, so I have to kind of be greedy, I think. I'm just checking cooldowns. I am decided to go for the Violet again. We do bomb him. He goes for the sleep on Isaria and he misses. So I think I want to get the FCC off the board because that's providing mitigation and if she takes turns she's going to start putting shields on people which is pretty annoying. So we attack into the FCC. I also kind of don't want to hit the ball because I don't want to give him the option to skill 3. Uh, we get a nice defense break there and take out the FCC, so that, you know, shows the strength of Confile. And I guess putting a bomb on Ball would probably be a good idea if we can get it, but he resists, so he's probably like 250 plus ER um, if he's, you know, that speed. So he goes for the skill 3 here to finish off Summertime Iceria, which is a good move on his part because that'll, you know, trigger the silence and also will... Um, I, I think it like lowers his cooldown of doing it again if he kills with the skill 3. Um, not so much a ball abuser, but we hit Violet because I deserve it, so Violet just dies. And now it's just Emma Ball versus my team, and I don't think he can solo an Aravi, so that's game. So in that previous game, we saw that Immunity Violet can be pretty good against Rand Cesarea, so that's definitely an option if you're not a Zoom Zoom player. If you have good speed gear with ER, you could consider putting it on ML Ball to disrupt the combo. If you do that, though, I think you're going to probably have to play to ban the A-Ravi or something of that sort, so, uh, because you know ER Ball probably can't solo an A-Ravi since he has pretty low hit points, and if A-Ravi's on Crimson Siege, he's just going to constantly cleanse off the sleep, and that could be pretty annoying for you. Okay, so here we take... Aravi first, Bellion and Rimuru are banned. The opponent then takes Ran Cesaria. I think because I Ran Cesaria'd him in the previous game, and he said, "No, I'm not gonna, you know, stand for that. This time, I'm gonna take it." And that's definitely an option, and is the option I have adopted right now. Um, I was sick of getting run over, so I'm like, "Hey, I'm just gonna take these units and um, try to get first turn." So now that they've taken Ran Cesaria, they've pretty heavily committed here to, you know, using this comp, uh, which means I think I can respond to it pretty heavily like I don't have to be KG about how I'm drafting like they've they've committed pretty hard to Rancis area so I can take Maid Chloe here who is uh, built on a decent ER I think she's like 250 260 and then I can take Troublemaker Crozet he has a ER team imprint so he can raise it even more he can also help protect the Maid Chloe by um, you know his passive 
and can make it pretty hard to one-shot her. I think um, if you do the Maid Chloe option, probably now more than ever, it's nice to use that Bastion artifact on her. Uh, it's the guild one that gives, I think, like 60 or 70 ER or something. So you do that with like a 250 build and you're at like 300 ER, you're going to resist essentially everything. Uh, I think the problem with that is it makes it a little less viable in just standard draft, but Maid has kind of fallen down on the standard ladder, to be honest, since ML Ricky is so absurd. Um, so it, it might not be a bad idea if you want to make your Maid a more specific answer to Rancis area rather than just a generically good standard Maid, if that makes sense. So interestingly, the opponent takes closer Charles and BBK, which I was not expecting. I was, uh, not, I guess I'm not really sure what I was expecting. I was expecting some sort of carry unit, like maybe Steny because I have Aravi, but instead we get Charles and BBK. So a lot of AOE units. So uh, I have options here. I can speed contest. I could take like Acid, for example. And I think that would be pretty decent because the opponent has Ran, the opponent has Closer Charles. These are fast, squishy units that I likely would be able to kill. However, that would put me in a situation where I would either need to coin flip with Ran or I would have to ban the Ran. And I don't uh, know if I really want to do that. I think AOL is better here because I don't have to outspeed, but AOL causes big problems for this whole team since he doesn't have Politis yet and like literally everything AoEs, right? So there's a really good chance that my AOL could cause problems for him. Uh, then I take Rem. Um, I think if you had Violet on immunity, that would be a good option here as well. Um, but my Violet's on Penset right now, so I just take Rem. Um, this is, I guess, a little bit of a atypical Rancis area draft from the opponent, but I think Rem is really good here, uh, since, again, literally everything AoEs. So Rem has ample opportunity to pop off. Um, he last picks Flitica, which I don't know if I care about. I have a lot of ER on my maid, so I don't I don't know if I care about Flitica. But if I get defense broken by the Ran, that could be bad news. So I think I need to ban him. I'm, I'm debating about banning BBK as well, just for the raw damage, but I think we just ban Ran. Uh, he bans AOL. So now we put maid in the back because I think we want to protect her the most. Uh, we put Trozit on Team ER Imprint to bump up my mate a bit, and uh, we see what happens. So Casinoween is, is definitely an option against these types of players. I think in general using a Casino Draft like Rem and Violet is not very consistent. I think you're going to lose more than you're going to win if you do that. You will certainly win some games because Rem can just absolutely pop off, right? Um, and so can Violet. But I think you need to be uh, a little more discerning about when you take them into Rancis area drafters. Like here, for example, they have taken other things like Charles and BBK that really lend to Rem popping off, right? So I think Rem is good here. But against a more standard Rancis area draft, I don't think Casino is a consistent answer. You may not have anything else, and if so, that's fine, right? You're just dra you draft as well as you can or, or with the answers that you have available. Um, but I think something like a high ER made is a more reliable way of dealing with this comp. So Flitica goes to reset Troza here because he reasons Maid is probably high ER, so that was smart. So now we get to see what Iseria is going to do. Who is she going to bomb? Okay, goes for the Rem, gets the bomb there. I think that's probably a good bomb target since you kind of want to just kill the Rem, I guess. Oh, okay, so Rem is uh, totally dead. And now BBK can skill 3. And I guess BBK's skill 3 is uncounterable, um, so Rem wouldn't have countered there anyways. But Charles and Caesarea, um, that's still a lot of AoE for Rem to do some action. Uh, go for the stun on Caesarea. Uh, don't get it. Um, I want to take her out because if uh, I bring my Rem back and she gets stunned, that's really bad news for me. Because um, I, I don't have a ton of cleanses with this comp because Troza got reset. Uh, so we bring Rem back. She can use her skill 3 to get up attack buff and also just heal because of Sigurd Scythe. Um, this will take skill nulls off and put hit down on everyone, which is nice. And now we can skill 3 with Maid. And I think now we're sitting pretty because the opponent doesn't have um, Cesaria to remove our revive buff. Um, we have, you know, skill null on Rem. Um, the opponent has hit down on everything, and, and they've used most of their damage abilities, so I think at this point we've essentially won. 
Finally, my sword has some work to do. Now we'll go on the stun for BBK here just to remove damage since this is the main source of damage for the opponent, and that's game. Okay, so we are once again faced with a Bellion AOL preband situation. I have first pick, so I take APOC. I think it's pretty hard if you're in the second pick slot here to take things that put you in a good spot and also protect you against Ran Cesaria, but perhaps maybe Steny and FCC, something something that lets you potentially flex more aggressively, I think. Carmen is a pretty slow pick, so I think a lot of people are just going to take Ran Cesaria into it. Something I should have picked up on during this phase of the draft, or this part of the draft, and I didn't, is that both Rimuru and Carmen have team ER imprints. And now the opponent's taking DJB, and there's a high likelihood that he is on an artifact that gives team-wide ER, like Shimadra Staff or Bastion, the new guild artifact. So I'm not drafting well here. This is a mistake on my part to not pick up on this. Uh, but this is a common strategy that was used kind of back in previous seasons against Carrot. You take a bunch of Team ER imprints with a unit like Maid Chloe, who also has a Team ER artifact, and you put your opponent in a situation where everything on your team suddenly has like 80 or 100 ER or something silly. If I had noticed that, I think I would have drafted differently. Um, the opponent has now taken Rylet. So Rylet does threaten Apoc Ravi. He can one-shot her. Um, we don't have mitigation on my side. I take Steny. That's a DPS unit that Rylet can't hit. Rimuru cannot hit. So um, it's a difficult thing for my opponent to deal with given the current setup that he has. And I think now, like to be honest, it might have been better if I flexed out of the Ran Cesaria cleave into something else. But I decided to go with Cerise here, I think, um, which I guess is still fine. I think Cerise is still fine here. I could have maybe taken Ruel. Uh, it depends on what they last pick. The problem is I'm not last pick, so I, I think I just stick to my guns and take the Cerise. So the opponent takes SSB. So that does give them reach for Steny. So I could ban that, that's an option. I think honestly the best ban is probably DJB. I make a big mistake here and I ban Rylet. I don't think I needed to ban Rylet at all. Um, if I ban DJB, then that takes away his cleanse option. And if I'm able to defense break or bomb the enemy team, um, you know, or strip away with Ran and then stun with Spectre, stuff like that, like it's just completely crippling for the opponent. So I think DJB was absolutely the ban. I make a big mistake here. The opponent pre-bans uh, uh, Summertime Iceria in the post-ban, so I screwed this up big time. But it does show you a potential strategy you could use against a Rance Iceria drafter. Take these units with Team ER imprints, and then take you know a uh, high ER cleanser who also has an artifact that gives team-wide ER. So you're kind of just trying to buff up yourself against debuffs. I think if the opponent did that, though, he probably should have banned Spectre or Arabi. Uh, but either way, I screw up here. I debate about Soul Burning, but DJB is faster than the rest of my team for the most part, and I'm not confident that my Cerise has enough effectiveness to stun him without Soul Burn. So I Soul Burn and stun the DJ Vassar there. Actually, not sure if that would have mattered. Hmm. Maybe I should have just saved my souls and just skill 3 I think I was afraid that he was just going to put immunity back up on everyone. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't strip them. So, pretty awkward. Um, and now, essentially, we've lost because... I guess now at least DGB is at the end of the team, so if we're able to strip away immunity here, we can stun the Rimuru at the very least. Uh, but Rimuru resists again. That I think is just unlucky. 
because my Cerise has plenty of, of effectiveness to get through all the Team ER stuff here. Uh, but this is going to pretty much lose us the game because this Rimuru will now counter and kill Spectre Tenebria because she has immunity. I think it's generally still good to have immunity on Spectre because you want to be able to take her into standard and it's just better there. Uh, you can see the SSB does resist the stun. So, unfortunate. So he goes into Ran. And now Carmen's going to put immunity and invulnerability on everything and we've essentially lost. Rimuru has already used his Analyze and Assess, so I can put immunity up on my team. Uh, my out is being able to kill this SSB, I think, and somehow get a Spectre back with Apoc Ravi. But that's going to be hard to do because she has invulnerability from Carmen, or invincibility, or whatever it's called. So there's the Bastion on DGB, you can see, giving his team ER. Um, this is a pretty squishy DJB, so he is going to die. I debate about saving the skill 3, but I don't think I can afford to do that. Unfortunately, this will trigger another bat back from SSB. So I'm just taking a ton of damage from her. We just really need to take her to take a turn so we can actually kill her. Um, but because she's so slow, she's able to get quite a few... Uh, focus stacks, and the fact that Cerise has put speed down on her means that she is slow as a turtle. So the opponent got a ton of value from uh, the slow there. Maybe it was better to just not skill 3 with Cerise. I wanted to get immunity off of her. Uh, she did resist the stun from Spectre, so that was unfortunate. I guess if the stun would have landed, we also would have been fine. That previous game showed that you could kind of use the old strategy of Team YDR imprints to cause trouble for Rancis area players. I think that's an okay answer, but I think that more practically, you know, it's kind of a cheesy thing that might work once, and once they know you do it or they're aware of how it works, um, a good player is going to be able to either play around it or, you know, ban appropriately, unlike myself. So this opponent also has an interesting strategy for dealing with Rancis area. Uh, my first pick, Apoc as usual. Uh, the opponent takes uh, ML Calric and Spectre Tenebria. So ML Calric is something I actively try in Rancis area because this guy has so much tempo and is so busted. If you try to play standard into him, I feel like he provides so much value, it is very difficult to do. So a reliable way of beating ML Calric teams is just to go over the top and blow them up. So ML Calric, uh, Rimuru, Spectre, so that's kind of like the Heaven Cleavey type strategy. And then ML Ken comes out of nowhere. So I kind of wonder, oh, is this an ER ML Ken? Like, is he 250 or 300 ER or something? And he's trying to cheese me that way. So debating about what I want to do here, I think I do want a bunch of damage, right? Because I'm probably getting first turn somehow. I don't want to take RB because ML Ken could potentially you know, just a uh, counter RB to death and not give me enough, uh, I guess, sustain for dealing with the ML can or, or ability to just, you know, kill the ML can. I take Ida because Ida provides a ton of damage. She provides AOE damage, so she'll be able to hit the specter. And she also puts skill null on herself, so she's not going to get killed by ML can here so that we get to Ida showcase a bit. And then I take Milam. Milam's another book holder. And Milam can also do pretty crazy single target damage, so I think that uh, this will give me an answer to blow up the ML Ken. I debate about banning the Spectre, but I think I have reach for her with uh, Ida here, so maybe I don't have to do that. Rimuru could cause me problems though, because Milam does have you know the Dragon's Eye or whatever it's called, and so he could counter and kill her. So I think Rimuru may have to be the ban, unfortunately. Uh, no, I guess I go with Spectre after all, and he bans Milam. So that worked out. I think I reasoned he was going to ban Milam because he took Violet last, so I'm like, well, if he's banning Milam, I don't need to ban Rimuru. So 
So we get to have an Eda Showcase. That's exciting. So no immunity on Violet there, which is bad for the opponent. If the uh, opponent had immunity on Violet, I would be in a much worse spot. Debating about Soul Burning, I think, to land the defense break. But I decided I don't want to do that because I want to Soul Burn Ida instead. Um, you know, the defense breaks are not 100%, so uh, there's a, a, you know, a decent chance that they just don't land even if I burn. And I think just doing a bunch of damage with Ida is probably more consistent. So we get to Soul Burn with Ida here. Uh, we get double countered, which is something I didn't consider. <laughs> uh, the Violet countering as well, and I guess he counters first. It, either way, I think she probably would have died, so that was pretty tragic. Um, I kind of felt like an idiot after doing that. It's like, oh yeah, they both counter, so skill wall doesn't do anything. So that was kind of a, a stupid moment, but we can bomb Rimuru here, and we can do things with Caesarea. Um, she landed her bomb on Emelken, so he can't be that high either. Probably he's 150 or something. Alright, so the entire team except for Kaurik is stunned. So now we can just skill 3 and bring back Ida. This was the plan all along, by the way. Um, completely calculated. Uh, so now Ida comes back and she takes a turn, and uh, it's like she never died. So we get to skill 3. Uh, and now the opponent is pretty crippled. Um, I can go ahead and put... I guess I could consider immunity, but I, d I don't want to bother triggering Rimuru. He's just going to die anyways. Okay, that's game. Okay, so again, with the Bellion and AOL pre-bans, this time I'm second pick. Uh, the opponent takes General Purgus. I'm instantly transported back to Season 2. Haven't seen this guy in quite a while, let alone his first pick. So I'm honestly a little clueless. I don't know what someone's going to do with g -Purg. You know, they could just be doing the standard kind of like aggressive g -Purgy thing. Um, he's also uh, sometimes built with really high effectiveness on like Champion's Trophy or something cheesy like that with other debuffers like f -tenny. So since I don't know what they're doing, I take APOC and Steny. These are both really good kind of neutral DPS units that I can take, and now this will let me flex into any number of directions later on in the draft. Um, I could have just taken Cerise, which the opponent takes here, because Cerise is good into G-Perg, but I, I don't know what they're doing, so I don't know. I wanted to stay flexible. Um, and more importantly, I didn't want to take APOC and then have to play into Steny. So the opponent takes Politus here, and I think that's tipping their hand that they're going to try to cleave me, because you don't take Politus proactively when the opponent has nothing you know, on their side of the field that can activate Politus unless you're trying to cleave, right? So we know what the jig is now. Um, I can take ML Ricky since he, um, I think, is you know obviously good into Cerise, and I think he's g decent into Politus if she's not on Crown, uh, because he gives enough turns of immunity to prevent the debuffs, even if he triggers her. Um, and I take Carmen again for the same reason. Heavy mitigation is nice. Um, thought about FCC, but I don't want to get opsigged. Um, so I take the uh, Carmen instead. And then he takes LQC and Summertime Iceria. So I, I think I pretty clearly want to take Maid here. If I have to let the LQC through, then Maid will allow me to get my hero back. You know, whatever he one-shots. Maid is also high ER or high-ish ER, so hopefully can resist some of these debuffs. Um, I'm debating about banning either the LQC or the Politus. I think there's both. There's merits to both. If I get to keep Spectre, I think LQC is a pretty decent ban because he'll have a really hard time busting through my team before Spectre can just delete him. On the other hand, I guess if I get debuffed and Spectre doesn't do much, um, Politus could give me big problems. So I decided just to ban the Politus. This will let me use my Carmen and my Maid you know, without getting punished, essentially, right? And he doesn't have a uh, buff block now, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, that. That can be very annoying, right? 
if um, he's able to lock my maid down and then put buff block and I can't activate Carmen, like it, it could be bad. So here's something like Apoc Ravi might die to LQC. Um, in, in fact, she probably will. But I have Carmen, I have Maid, I have Steny. I think that should be enough to deal with the rest of the team. So we do get Lucky and Resist on Carmen and Steny. I think I was lazy and forgot to switch over my Carmen e, uh, Team ER imprint. Um, he bombs my Maid, so I get punished for it. I, I don't know how much effectiveness is on that Cesarea, but you know it's got to be at least 200. I guess it could be like 160 technically. Um, my maid has 250 ER, so she gets stunned. Um, I honestly just haven't had uh, the ability to farm up the guild Bastion artifact yet. I've been finishing off Warhorn. Um, I may switch her over to Bastion just to prevent things like this, but... Uh, Alright, so our APOC is going to get bombed. And unfortunately, she is all the way at the back of the CR bar. So if we bring her back with Maid, she's almost certainly just going to die again before she gets a turn. Which is kind of a bummer, but we, we still have Spectre here, so I think we're okay. Um, I want to delete this Summertime Iceria ASAP, because she has obviously very high effectiveness, and she'll be able to strip you know buffs off of my team, lock my Maid down even more. So she is priority number one. And now we can put up the Carmen S3, and I think we've essentially stabilized at this point. Since LQC has used your skill 3, so that's game. Alright, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how to, you know, play against Rand Cesarea. I think it is very hard. The team definitely seems overtuned. Um, a quick summary, if you have no speed threats, consider using, you know, Green Violet on Immunity. He could be a very strong answer this little turd. And uh, if he has immunity, you know, he can likely prevent a bomb from, you know, being put on your team with a passive. That's definitely an option. You always have potential speed threats like Assassin Sid, but remember to draft him. You typically are going to need to ban out the Aravi because she could cause big problems for you otherwise. AOL can work in the right spots as well. And then high ER units like Maid, um, I think are probably the most consistent way of handling this draft. Um, to do that though, you do need pretty good gear, you do need a pretty high ER, and it really helps if you can get that guild artifact. So let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions on maybe how you deal with this comp. Um, it'd be interesting to hear it. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Later.